So my conundrum is that um, ground control bot, of course, I just, I haven't had time or motivation to update it recently. I think my lack of motivation is honestly that I can't see launches from where I live now. So oh, no. I'm like less, I'm like, it, it actually, it actually kind of hurts. Like, I'm like, I don't, I can't step outside and see it, you know? So, but somebody has emailed me mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm sorry, I've been busy, you know, I intend to get back around to it. Maybe not. I don't know. Kind of like wishy-washy answer. And then the dude replied and was like, do you have like a, a Patreon or something that we can support you? And I want to be like, no, I want you to like give money to your food bank or something. <laughs> like, just give yeah, me. Yeah, but that won't help the work get done. That won't help the work get done. Yeah. But money won't either. No, I, like, I know. It's like, you can send me money, but it's not going to make it any higher priority for me. Like, I need the yeah. motivation. Yeah. So you can it's maybe nice, send I mean, me it's like a, a nice chat. offer. It is. And I, but I also want to be like, I appreciate that. Would you like to take it over? <laughs> Here's the code. <laughs> um, maybe that's it. Maybe I just need to figure out one time, like how to send out a message to all the slacks and be like, hi, I'm done with this. If you're interested, please email me. <laughs> well, you could just be like, do you want to be a collaborator? Like, yeah. Yeah. Because it, it still, it still sends out stuff to Slack though, doesn't it? Or does it not? That's currently to say, I had it disabled at the moment because it was um, working mostly, except that once every 24 hours, it sent out some like a weird update that was not appropriate. Like, it wasn't inappropriate, but it wasn't accurate. Oh, I was like, what is I this? I was like, saying? ooh, somebody hacked the API they're using? <laughs> no, the bot I, is that sentient would... and it's getting saucy. <laughs> <laughs> saucy bot. Mm. Um, yeah, so no, it was just, it was like, it was data for upcoming launches, but it, it didn't fit the parameters of an hour or five minutes or one minute. It was just mm. like, hey, sometime... Our, here's the next five launches in case you needed to know. And if it's 30 days away, that's going to be annoying for 30 days. So, yeah. You know? um, not that it's a quiet bot by any stretch of the imagination. It's <laughs> it's pretty loud. I mean, the launch cadence has gone up quite a bit from when it first launched, when the bot launched, not the first launch. Mm -hmm. So we understood. Yeah. But I also don't want like it also. Um, it also has a problem of like I built it in WordPress and it has like. I did some things early on because I thought, well, this is going to be installed in like three teams. Who cares, you know? That's so I made not... some decisions and it it's, I have got some scaling issues. Like there's a post meta lookup that's problematic and it would be less problematic if I didn't have a, you know, 100,000 rows in the post con or the WP post table, right? So there's all that too. And I don't even know what I'm keeping. Like it's the person that wrote this left really crappy documentation. <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I did that with Spacebot. I went, like, I just went back and was just like, who wrote this? <laughs> I, I guess I, I guess I'm still on the same page. I feel like this, that phase of my life has passed. And I just want to say that and be like, no, I'm shutting it down. That's what I need to do. That's fine. I don't think enough people do that with things, to be yeah. honest. Sometimes yeah. things just it's, keep going. It's, it probably is worth sending out a, a slack message in, via the bot and then putting a, a message on the github repository that says hey this is being retired um and then you can also archive the project on github um but i don't know if you necessarily like if you're if 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 there is a possible feature where you transfer ownership of the repository to somebody else to own then it doesn't necessarily make sense to to actually archive it yeah I guess my other problem is I look at it and I'm like, I made some I made some architecture decisions that I want to undo, and I'm like, well, maybe instead of undoing them, I should just migrate to a system that's more appropriate for this, you know. But is this all happening between like midnight and six a.m.? Like, talking so about like when I do this? Yeah. Yeah. Like twenty twenty five. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the moment, no, I'm not. Like, I honestly, I this guy sent this email, very polite. Mm -hmm. um but he sent it and it was like i want to say it was like launch day last week or something like that so this email came in and i saw the notification on my watch and i'm not even sure where my personal address is set up maybe it's just on the website i don't realize it um maybe it's in slack i don't know somewhere my email address is set up a support and so this this email came in it was super polite and i want to be like i'm launching like way more important things right now i couldn't care about like but i you know i i yeah, I waited a day and then sent like a reasonable reply as opposed to being like, yeah, nuts to you, buddy. So. 
And maybe they're not even a dev. They just really love space launches. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the I, it, thing, too. Like, I, I think that it, it, it. Yeah, they're definitely not. Yeah. They're definitely not. I get I get messages like that from people who aren't. I was getting a message. Oh, what was the plugin that that? Oh, it was the progress bar plugin. Um, one of the very first plugins I ever wrote and put up on WordPress.org. Uh, and all it does is this silly CSS progress bar. Um, mm -hmm. and it's a short code, so you just do like, you know, WP. I think it's WPPB, like WordPress progress bar. Uh, and then like. There's a number of different things you can add to it, but the default is just like um, progress equals and then a, and then a number, and then it turns that into a percent out of a hundred. But you could do a whole bunch of other things. Um, you can do math. You could do like one twenty out of one fifty, um, and you can put different text in there. Um, and there was some, I don't know, it showed up on Patch Stack uh, with some security vulnerability. Um, which I don't even really get because like it's a freaking short code. Like what? <laughs> yeah. What could it possibly? Um, I I did fix it, so you know anybody watching or listening to this can know that it's a safe and secure plugin, um, for what it's worth. Uh, but yeah, the person that was the person that reported it was just a random person using it. And they weren't even getting the report from Patch Stack directly. They were getting the report from some other security plugin that used Patch Stack's API to report on issues. So this was already like second hand, like third hand, you know. And when they asked about it to the plugin, the plugin said, well, it's just on this report over here. Um, you know, we don't know anything about it either. Um, because I was like, because I, I think I asked, like, what in God's name could possibly be insecure about a short code? Yeah. This, doesn't that seem a little like irresponsible on that, that like middle plugins? Like, hey, we, we got this great database of, of risks and yeah. this was in there. But what, I mean, what's the, what's the risk? I don't know. We did, we just looked at this other database. Right. Yeah. And I, I think it was a, I think it was like a, a cross site scripting thing where like, text wasn't being escaped properly because mm -hmm. there is a possibility that you could put just user text but, into the progress bar and because it wasn't being escaped before i mean like stuff oh, that would only be stuff that would only be affected if you already had admin access and i basically said that too but like also i wanted to make the alert go away so i you know yeah, did do the fix obviously um but uh and i also then added um uh that that was when i i wrote my first uh github action because um i wanted to have something that would perhaps tell me when there was a problem <laughs> yeah um but the github action is based on so tenup has a plugin vulnerability uh monitor thing it's not an action it's a thing i don't know um tool um, which can use patch stack or I don't know, whatever the other ones are. There's mm -hmm. like three. Um, uh, WP scan is one of them. And then there's the one that's not owned by automatic. And that also isn't a uh, patch stack. Um, and the last one is free for basic things. The other two require like a fee to access the API. So I, I basically, I wrote this action that hooks into their thing. You can pass which library you want to use uh, and if it needs like authentication or whatever. And then um, and then it will give you an alert if the code that you're shipping ha is, uh, you know, a problem. And so if you are a plugin, then you could add it to your plugin repository, GitHub Actions, and it will say, hey, your plugin is vulnerable. Now, I realized after I read all of this stuff that this is checking an existing database. It's not going to tell you that the code that you shipped was vulnerable. Mm -hmm. It's just Until telling it's you made it, to that database. Yeah, it's just telling you that a vulnerability exists in the database with this plugin because it installs a plugin and then runs the check on it. Yeah. Um, so it's not you know as useful as it could have been, <laughs> but it's um, a thing that matters less though. Like at least it's happening and the alerts are taking place. Mm -hmm. Like we push code, you go, oh, I yeah, should fix can, that while I'm can, thinking about it. You can hook it to a cron and then it can just be like a thing that runs periodically. And alerts Have you, you used GitHub's uh, action cron stuff? A little it's bit. It's terrible. Is it? It's it's completely unreal. It's like, it, it's 
it, yeah, it's not. Is it worse than just, WordPress is? Uh, it depends on how much traffic you get to your WordPress site, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I don't know what the trigger is, but it's definitely not reliable. You can be like, do this every five minutes, and it's like, eh, I'll see how I'm feeling. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Maybe I'll skip that one. It's, it's I, like... I wouldn't I wouldn't expect a cadence of every five minutes anyway, probably. I would probably only run it once a day or once an hour or something. Yeah, well, in this case, that makes sense. And it would probably be fine at that. But for small things, like... Yeah. Um, well, for small things, you should probably be doing it on commit anyway. I mean, unless it's like a... Unless it's an action that's going to take a really long time to run. Even then. Um, yeah, we were we were kind of abusing it. We were using it to pull an external system to d determine some other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so the frequency was helpful during the day, um, especially as it related to like live sales. But what are you going to do? It, we, di we didn't need to use GitHub Actions for that. It was arbitrary that we used that. We needed something automated, and we didn't have a machine lying around that we could do it with. But the right thing to do would be stand up a machine that's purpose is to run this cron. Or use something more robust than GitHub Actions like Circle CI or something to do that thing. Yeah, we we uh, we ran into a fun one. I don't want to talk about code anymore. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, I I don't even really want to talk about it when I have to for work. So <laughs> we have a, got... we had a we had a viewer. <laughs> I say this like it's a shock. I we had we had a comment on a recent video. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that evidenced that or that that they said hey i will subscribe and then i actually saw them subscribe so um yeah so welcome. yeah welcome what's um, the name let me find uh let me find the comment um oh no i can't find it i while you're looking for the comment i will say i was on a call yesterday with some devs and um, we had covered our topics and then we got into like a conversation about the craft of writing software. And that was a lot more fun. And the next thing I knew we were like 20 minutes over our time. And mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh, if you need to leave, you can go. I didn't mean to keep anyone. And they were like, they, we were, we were all on the same page. Like, no, this was fun to have like a deep because we're very different disciplines. So it was a lot of dialogue and back and forth. And how do you dot, dot, dot. And it was really mm -hmm. fun and helpful. Um, uh, the user's the user is uh, Zephyr spelled with an eight. <laughs> I'm not sure where the eight would be in there. Z a t p h y capital R. Um, okay. And uh, you said Zephyr to spell with an eight, and I'm like, well, it's not the first. I know, letter, right? But it could literally be any other letter. <laughs> any other letter in there. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not even the letter, just the letter, the number eight injected. Who found us? Who found us yeah. via the Genrenator API? Uh, oh, yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Yes, we're not we're not shutting that down. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that works. <laughs> well, it's also running on the website, so we'd have to shut the website down for the Genrenator to to not work. Yeah. Not not that I'm like actively testing it. Probably that's a thing that we could write a GitHub action just to like do a proof of life to say like, hey, it still works. <laughs> Yeah, I, like, you know, automated checking to make sure that it's still pinging. I, um, yeah, I, 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 uh, I see the number going up every day in our DevOps channel, mm -hmm. and I'm confused as to why. Did we ever figure out why it goes up as much as it does every day? No. no. <laughs> okay. I mean, I assume, I assume that there are things that, I mean, it hasn't gone up in a while. It's been 4,289,805 genres for a while. Maybe we've reached the limit of what's in there. Maybe we reached, maybe, maybe, maybe we reached some sort of uh, big int uh, value where it actually can't increment more than that. Listen, I said I didn't want to talk about code, but now I want to find out. <laughs> it's actually been that number for quite a while. Me, it doesn't work. Let me, uh, let me, <laughs> let me generate a new, uh, new genre. Well, I don't, uh, I don't think that that's the thing. Is it? Is I it know, a standalone but... plugin? Oh no, we use. Uh, how do I yeah. keep track of that? Sure, maybe. <laughs> um, that's the genre needer API. Uh, I want to. Okay, here's the. 
There's the endpoint. So I'm creating a genre. And it is doing something, maybe. Maybe not. Oh, no, it did. Bunk. <laughs> Bunk viola acoustica. Mm. Mm. That's a good one. Uh, okay, can I do a count? 4,630,786. So it did go up. Uh, let me confirm. Yes. But perhaps the alert bot is not getting the right number because that number is different. So, but how did we get to four million in the first place? I mean, I do think I don't know. <laughs> so, but, genre count, but is in the binary jazz genre nader genre count function, uh, I I do think that well, for at least when we had the genre nader uh, Twitter bot mm -hmm. spitting stuff out like once an oh, hour. Oh, you're right. Then, um, then it would be making a lot of stuff that way. And if anybody is using it to do that sort of thing, automated type stuff, then um, then it could get big that way. Um, this is compelling content, I realize. I know. We can also... Compelling, can also... compelling audio content, really. Yeah. We can also do uh you can also do genre with a number at the end um to do a bunch of genres. So well, that'll give us another twenty-five <laughs> <laughs> that I just did. Gypsy yeah. saxophone. That's a little yeah. bit tame, actually. So um I just realized that we are not checking for duplicates. Yeah, no, for sure. We're for sure we're not checking for duplicates because they're just iterating every time somebody creates a genre. There's no way that, like, yeah, we may have created every possible genre in existence, but, we'll, but we will never know. But we will never know. But that number is probably something ridiculously, stupidly high considering the number of variables that we fed into this thing. Yeah. Well, that was my other thought is it would be nice to know what that number, like the potential maximum is. I bet we, that's something that's calculable. It is. Yes. It's, um, yeah, I don't remember how to do that calculation, but it's yes, like, it is. It's like, okay, so we would like multiply like instruments by beats, by adjectives, by prefixes, by suffixes, yes. by regions, by genres, because each one of those things can get have any of the other previous things or something. Yeah, it's but then I think number. it's minus one or something at the end. Sure. <laughs> if you say It doesn't so. matter. Yeah. It's, it's, it is a big number, yeah. Catalan yeah. Zap Two-Step Flow. I'm I'm down with that one. Gothic mm. crossover dance, that's pretty good. I I uh space dub fusion. I mean honestly, like it's still a really good bot. These are really <laughs> these are these are legit genres that I would like listen to. <laughs> um I, I've shared before that like the 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 best crowds I get when I play at nursing homes are if I open like before bingo. So I was thinking bingo prelude would be Bingo oh. prelude. Good moniker. Yeah. Like as a, sounds, as a band like a name, name or as a as a genre. As a performing, as we a should performing make name a band for me. name generator. My name is Bingo Prelude. Call well, it you can just add that to the genre nader. It'll say a genre and then be like, you know, like <laughs> well, an example well, no, musician needs, or band. Needs, so prelude. It needs, <laughs> it needs a different it needs a different API though. Like the genre nader API could hook into the, the band renator API. <laughs> Bandonation. Um, <laughs> I, I, we probably have talked about this before, but I don't recall. Have you all watched Phineas and Ferb? Uh, There's a character small in small amounts, and I know that this has come up uh, in the podcast before. The innator, Doctor Doofenshmirtz. Everything he creates is is in Doofenshmirtz. In Doofenshmirtz. Yeah, it's a, well, it's it's a, a funny. Good. It's a it's a good show. It's it's it's, it's a it's a worthwhile. Uh, way to name things we have uh we have the update nader um mm. at, at pantheon which is a automation Somebody's a dr doofenshmirtz fan an, an automation tool that updates things <laughs> um i have a thing that builds facets called a facet nader that's yeah. pretty good 
It, the, the update nader actually requires two parts. There is the update mm. nader, which is the tool itself, and then there is the update nate function. Um, but update nate uh, has been renamed to update tool because having update nate and update nator was too difficult for people to remember. Yeah. <laughs> like because it's already confusing enough to 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 know to try to figure out which tool you need to edit to add a new thing to update to Nate. Because it's it's not super clear where that code lives just at a glance. Oh. So it's always one of those things where, where it's like, where do I put this? We're talking about code again. Let's not talk about code. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about AI. I don't have, no. Any, no, let's I have, I don't have anything new to say about AI. <laughs> let's talk about something... Although our last uh, our last uh, show description was written uh, partially by AI. Well, if you'll recall, I got a pep talk from AI, and I yeah, not. Do you feel covered. pepped? Do you feel no, pepped sufficiently? Not even a pepped? little. Um, let me tell you about my breakfast yesterday because okay. it was it was it, it was real. <laughs> Please I, um, tell me that your breakfast wasn't created by AI. No. Compelling, compelling audio content. We again. have some really nice English muffins right now, and. Um, a thing that avocados? neither Allison nor I can eat, I think. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, so I fried two eggs and put avocado on top. No, I put English muffin, then avocado, then the eggs on top. And I usually go the other direction. I put the avocado on top of the egg. But reversing that order made all the difference in the world. And I don't know why I haven't done that before. Um, I'm still thinking about it, and it's been 36 hours. So. I agree with the new order. <laughs> Yeah. I, what, what was I doing before? Like I don't know. It's like you like, weren't living your life to its fullest. <laughs> I think I think in my head I was like, well, I'm having eggs and English muffin. Yeah, and I can do like a half this. of one. So it was garnish on top, right? But no, actually, if you put it underneath, number one, I can eat more of it because I feel like it's more important. But the end, oh, so good. God, so good. Um, but then also like it it actually serves like the place of like I don't need to butter. The English muffin because I got this yummy avocado there. So, um, anyway, that was a quality life improvement for me. <laughs> we had an Please. avocado recently that was of the variety where, um, like the middle is super hard randomly, mm -hmm. um, but like the outside feels normal. So, like you cut into it, uh, and then it's like, wait, I can't, I can't. I can't actually cut this in half and I can't actually scoop the thing. And then it's just a big mess of avocado in my hand. And Such a just, disappointment. Yeah, it is. This shirt, I don't know why. I can't see the cut avocado without launching half of it against myself and leaving a green spot on my shirt. <laughs> so that's my current struggle is. is I mean, I have that with all apron. food. <laughs> yeah. I need, need a what? An avocado apron. <laughs> I do. I have a nice apron. I don't know why I don't wear it when I'm cutting avocado because <laughs> so I'm doing it for breakfast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Aprons uh, feel like overkill for making breakfast. It's just it's just a couple eggs. I don't know. I wish or avocados were less expensive. I don't know. Where how much are you they giving are. where in Canada on an island? Where do avocados come from? Are they most shipped our, from Mexico? <laughs> Off yeah, most of our avocados are from California <laughs> or Mexico. Um, you can't really grow avocados here unless no. it's in a greenhouse. Some people do mm. it on. There's a woman who can do it on Salt Spring Island. Because we were trying to figure out whether we could grow avocados, yeah. but we don't have a greenhouse yet, so um, yet we'll see. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, with the, you... the promise of a, I mean, avocados are three dollars here, so like, I mean, Canadian, so work that out as it may. I but... don't know what that I, means. I just is that worse or better? I'm not even sure. <laughs> it's probably like um, I think it's a little bit. I think it's a little bit less than ours. It's like a half, like double. So. Oh, a buck and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're, I think that. Wow. I don't know if what that's, if that's the point. conversion that's gone way down because I, I, yeah. when I was looking at uh, houses in Canada a couple years ago, it was like maybe like 70 cents to the dollar or something to something like that. So it was I like, just, you could just like say, okay, this number and like a yes. little bit less. <laughs> yeah, I'd assume... have to double, I'd have to double check, but I generally just. I don't know. It works in my favor if I'm making U.S., but if I'm making yeah. Canadian, it's all same, same. <laughs> yeah. I um, 
I just assume that it's always ten dollars more in Canada if I've learned anything from the back of books, because the price is U.S. and then Canada is ten. Why are more. books so expensive? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm like, what are we doing wrong? <laughs> the price of well, paper. You would expect the price to be dropping since the books that are being removed from school libraries have to go somewhere. Yeah, and you think they're going to Canada? <laughs> I, I wouldn't you? If you were a book in a library in Florida, I would go to Canada. I just send them to Canada. I, th there's there's a pattern that happens occasionally on Quora. I get my stupid Quora digest every day or whatever. And so I've seen this type of question before where it's not really a question. It's like, I am leaving the country uh, and moving to insert new country because I don't like insert chief of state. Uh, oh, yeah. what do I need to know or something? And the answer is almost invariably. So it's the country is either Canada, but the most recent one that I saw was like New Zealand or Australia. And the answer was, no, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, because it was like, no, we actually like, you need to like show that you're a value, you would be a valuable citizen that we would want before you can even get a, a, a visa to live here. Like you're not just moving. <laughs> there is a weird I want to say American centric thing of just like, well, I can just move. I can just go. And I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> no, yeah. that's not the case with any other, like every other country is like, Ooh, I'm, I want to try to immigrate and do this. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, cause there's steps. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you, do you think that's, why do you think that is? Is it just like ignorance and just like, like, Extending the, the concept of, of like person, I have a blue passport, I can go wherever I want. The so. type of person that would write a question on a question and answer site like Quora, who would say, I'm upset about X person leading the country, I'm going to leave the country, is not the type of person who is likely to have done the research involved in understanding what the complexity of immigrating into another country would be. Yeah, because it's different than some someone like looking for some anecdotal like, uh, like experience of being like hey i've looked into this i i'm thinking about doing this path like oh because okay. i actually like, looked at what immigrating to canada would be like i've done the saying, research you're saying the venn diagram of the person asking this question on quora and the person that's bumped into international living is there's no intersection yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> how is that for a poll feel feel pretty good about that today <laughs> good i also think that like i don't know i don't think we're I don't think we're taught a lot about history in the States in the same way that other countries are forced to learn about U.S. history. <laughs> I mean, okay. So oh, well, I, I there's think, a topic for seven I think minutes. That there is, I think yes. that there is like, there's like the, however, the Venn diagram of people who complain about like people immigrating across the Southern border into the U.S. and mm. the people who don't understand the actual steps involved in legally immigrating into a country is probably like pretty like there's definitely a, a fair bit of overlap in the it middle. It looks almost right? like a circle. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. That's fair. Um, what I was gonna say is um because essentially uh, those are the people that they're basically asking that question and saying, I'm going to do this thing myself um yeah. for this other country that isn't the US. <laughs> yeah. I went and saw Oppenheimer on Sunday. Oh, good. Yeah. Hey, I'm seeing it. Uh, I'm seeing it today. <laughs> no spoilers. I have, I have not seen, um, but uh, Aaron's grandfather worked with Oppenheimer, and so I have one question about the movie: Is there a character in the movie uh, who may or may not be named Lawrence Johnston, uh, who worked on the detonator? If it's Johnston was messaged, it was. But men mentioned it was only in passing in a scene it was not a primary character that I, I have memory of so okay maybe but i don't think so i, I was curious uh i was i was just curious because um because he knew he knew him as oppie apparently and he's he's he, that nickname is used often in the movie by many people for him yeah. and and also like anybody who is asking who anybody who is doing research uh, up and like even towards the end of his life anybody who's doing research into like the bomb and how it was made and like all the research and like all the research labs and all the scientists that worked on it he was one of the last living scientists to work on stuff so he became a source of a lot of that historical information mm. the primary source yeah, yeah. Mm. it 
I'm going to set the movie aside because it, it's, it's, I mean, as far as movies go, it's fine. It's good. I, <laughs> I enjoyed it. Um, so could, it ha- I, could it have been shorter? I That's my concern going into it today. Yeah, it could have. Yeah. Because so. I'm driving an hour to go yeah. to the IMAX theater to see it. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. But um, Barry or I, Victoria? Victoria. I, oh. I think that, I think that it Barry. actually tries to accomplish two things in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I won't go any further than that. But the thing that, that bothered me leaving was like, um, it only briefly touched on like the, I don't even say briefly, because it did touch on. But it didn't touch on deeply enough, like the moral implications of dropping the bomb. And because um, in my understanding, working with my knowledge of a primary source of information, um, that was not something they considered. They, yeah, they so weren't, they they sh- weren't, I mean, they kind of, they kind of were, but it was more like of a like this is being done so that worse things don't happen like we're and and like if we don't do it someone else is going to beat us to it um so need to get whatever scientists we can on our side so that we can do it first um and that i don't know that i go so far with ai destroying the world but i i do feel a little bit of that in other technologies where it's like it's the jurassic park thing like we were so obsessed if we could, we just shouldn't, didn't stop to think if we should. Mm-hmm. And maybe even that conversation like should happen, but it was like, well, if we don't, someone else is going to, and then what do we do? And it's like, I, I mean, I just, I struggle so much with like, there's only one country in the history of the world that's dropped a, a nuclear weapon and they did it twice. And it's, it, it's like, you can't, it, it's baked in and, and to, to, to plaster over that, you have to say, well, it was the right thing to do. Otherwise, right. And 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 I I think I think that's. I never want to say that there's um a country is built around, um, moral shortcomings, like especially the country that I live in, because that feels gross, right? And and like an ignorant thing to say, but but that portion is is. That that has not been handled, or it, um, yeah, that has been handled or thought through or dealt with or considered or. You know, we won. We won the war and moved on, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's a cancerous part of U.S. history. One of you know, one of many. One yes, one of well, and I. I mean, and there's we've certainly seen the threads around like, oh well, they used this unoccupied land in New Mexico. Well, what yeah, I, I guess unoccupied by like by white, white people scientists. <laughs> yeah, like, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's it's a lot less populated after that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's part of it too. Is is that that like, where does that sit in the history books after another fifty years of digesting it? He was very Lawrence Johnston was very religious too, like very, very much so. Uh, um, and like studied it like academically as well. And I always found that an interesting tension. Um, and I didn't ask him about it. I didn't dig into it. I probably wouldn't have if I had an opportunity mm. to. Like, there's a there's just a lot of, like, I don't I don't know Do you... how he got to the that point, or if it's if it was a response to having to work on stuff and and having these moral quandaries, or if it was just that's just how he is and how he thinks normally. I kind of think it's probably the latter. Uh, um, Given age, I think that's fair, but also, you know that that dovetails nicely with the concept of sin right Mm -hmm. like that i can i can atone for my bad things in some way so that that whole atonement and making right is 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 a probably uh really tempting concept if you're involved in something like that right Mm -hmm. Um, he was of the uh what's it called intelligent design uh philosophy where like mm. the idea that the 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 uh, the the branch of Christianity that merges that basically says like yeah science is real and also God made science so that's why everything's yeah. great. <laughs> I would I would assume like an atomic mind and creationists mm-hmm. are probably mutually exclusive. If we're talking Venn diagrams, there's no right. overlap <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. Although I say that, and honestly, like I guess if someone were to tell me that 
they fit both categories, I'd be like, I mean, of course, it's 2023 and Twitter or <laughs> used to exist. Why why wouldn't that be a thing? Sure. It's now X. I don't know. Maybe X you don't pronounce X X. Maybe you pronounce X Twitter because it's still Twitter.com. <laughs> What? It's, it's like it's like it's like it's like it's like Prince's weird symbol yeah. days where it was where it, it was the artist. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I I don't think that's the case. I don't. Boy, the amazing thing is that it's still going to me. It, it has Twitter or X. Yes, that it hasn't hit that fatal thing where it can't continue. And that fatal thing, maybe not paying their server bills. I don't know. We'll see soon enough. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it's getting close, though. If you chase enough people away, you Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.